Welcome to the 2021 Power List, where we decided to focus on leadership and inclusion. The executives on this year's Power List have selected power players within their own organizations who represent impactful, innovative, inclusive leadership. We will release exclusive interviews with our power players talking about these topics weekly. This week, we have Jose Andres, founder of World Central Kitchen. That, uh, the restaurant industry, it's, uh, it's on thin ice, uh, has always been on thin ice. That even before this pandemic, we saw that the restaurant industry is one of the most beautiful businesses, but also one business that is very complicated uh, to do successfully. Uh, and, and COVID, if anything, has shown that weakness. And that I hope we will go back in the 2021, 2022. I hope it's stronger because probably we learned the lessons. We learned the lessons that numbers are going to be important from rent uh, to how much we charge for the food we give to to, and obviously how much we pay our employees, that if anything, um, we need to pay more, not less. And um, we need to make sure that restaurants can succeed, uh, obviously in the good times, better than what they've been shown they can. Many restaurants stay around forever, but many more restaurants don't make it through one year. COVID-19 has shown us that we need to become stronger in our business model. So that, that means we need to maybe charge more, but also pay employees more and, and kind of rework the economic model. Yeah, I think we've learned that profits cannot be used only at the, at the bottom, but also profits of the community where the restaurants are in, right? And if anything, what I learned is that the people that feed America, sometimes it seems they cannot feed themselves. And until we don't come with an answer to this conundrum, um, it's, it's very hard. And that's what I've been putting on my heart and my thinking. If anything, this has been a year of going through a very deep thought about what this business model is. Obviously, the business model needs to make money for, for, for everybody, uh, for the investors, obviously, for the owners, obviously. Obviously, our restaurant, we are a small, Investor, a small business owners, many many of them they forget that these restaurants that they it's only three or four people working, and that making money means paying themselves a salary, and we need to make sure that uh, one of the things I always hated was I don't like to use the word hate, but every time we did cheap eats, uh, as many magazines and newspapers they always did cheap eats. I came to realize that cheap eats means that somebody is not getting paid or the farmer or the fisherman, or the guy doing the food delivery, or the guy doing the food takeout delivery, or the cooks and waiters and busboys working on the place. So now it's not anymore about cheap eats, but should be right eats. Uh, a way to feed America and feed the planet where the people that are feeding America and the planet actually can feed themselves and their families. Uh, uh, Jose, you, you said that that the industry is is on thin ice. Are there? Uh, do you have plans on, on changing the own your own business model with Think Food Group about how you operate? I, I am rethinking the model. Well, uh, obviously, uh, these moments I think they are huge. Um, I think the restaurant we will come back strong. I'm more worried what's happening between today until the day we beat COVID nineteen. I think once we go back to normal, the restaurant industry will come back. The tourism industry will come back. What is, I'm very worried is between today until the day we reopen full speed ahead. That's what I'm really worried about. Many more business maybe are gonna fail, many more restaurants, many more people in our industry are gonna be uh, going through very difficult hardships. And that's why I believe any bill that this White House, Biden-Harris administration, with the support in bipartisan ways, 
uh, it's going to be vital. I know I've been part of the Restaurant Act, like many chefs. I think it's very beautiful what has happened because it has been a very inclusive organization. Sometimes when it's too many, uh, it's a lot of different opinions, but I think it's been great for the restaurant industry, especially the independent owner operators, more than half a million in America that came together. And we've had, for being the first time, not successes to claim yet, but everybody has been listening what the restaurant industry has been requesting from the White House and from our senators and congressmen uh, representatives. So uh, on the other hand, we saw how an NGO like ours, which is created by chefs, um, uh, we've been able to push the Feed Act. That is another way that we can be helping the restaurant industry in the process of feeding the people in need in every city, in every neighborhood, uh, helped by federal dollars channeled through FEMA, we could be helping not only maintain the jobs and the restaurant owners pay the rent and pay the farmers and, 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 and have a, 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 a positive impact in the, in the economy, but in the process feeding and the people in need in the same communities. So I think these are the great things that from policy to new business models, to minimum wage is gonna be finally the minimum wage $15. I think, uh, I know even, um, it's a lot of studies that says that a lot of businesses probably would shut down because that minimum wage, and, 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 and I believe that the minimum wage, once and for all, all across the country should be increased. We cannot be having the people that feed America not being able to feed themselves. I keep repeating that. and if, and, and I'm going to say that probably the minimum wage is not even the right name for that. It should be the right wage. What is the right wage for men and women working in the restaurant industry uh, to be able to live a, a good life in America without having to go to a soup kitchen, without having to go through food stamps to make, to make ends meet at the end of the month? Why are we gonna make sure that those men and women that retire from the restaurant industry, they have funds to have a good retirement so they don't have to be working until, you know, they, 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 they have no more to give. Um, I think this is uh, the things we're gonna be seeing the change and where hopefully better run business restaurant models for the small restaurants or the bigger ones are gonna be making sure that every that everybody does well. That obviously the, the 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 investors do well and the owners do well, but that cannot be at the expense of the the, the 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 cooks and the chefs and the and the waiters and the bartenders all the way down the chain, all the way to the farms. If the restaurants at the end we take care of ourselves, but it's still the people work in the farms and the goodness of the earth, the fruits and vegetables, the crops and the oysters, those men are not having a life that we can say is respect, respectful for living in America, that they can make ends meet. This is not good enough. So we need to make sure that the entire chain from the producer all the way to the last person that makes sure that one guest has a good experience in a restaurant, that everybody is taken care of and everybody can make it on their own. Stay tuned for our next leadership conversation from The Power List.